Five Safari. My name is James Hendry on Cameron's Brian, and this is Safari Live. Welcome to the magnificent Juma and Arethusa game reserves here in the world famous Sabi Sands. It's part of the Greater Kruger National Park in northeastern South Africa. More than twice the size of Yellowstone National Park and is home to all of Africa's iconic animals. This is Safari Live. It's just after dawn, 6 a.m. My name is Hayden Turner and have we got an adventure for you today. I've got two vehicles out, a drone in the sky, a bushwalk and trackers out since dawn. This is going to be a fantastic program. If you'd like to contact us, tweet us through hashtag Safari Live. You have just gotten on the biggest safari vehicle on the planet. Let's see what Peter's up to. Hello. Awesome to have you this side as well. Lots of, th of things happening. Elephant with James. Aiden's got a live safari with us. Which is the call of the Impalas. And we could hear them calling not far from here. We saw the herd earlier. Sorry, I'm just really excited because this happened about 30 seconds ago for me. The alarm calling. And normally Impalas don't alarm call like that unless there's serious predators around. Leopard maybe, lion maybe. But my feeling here is that it's leopard because we're looking for shadow. And we are at the sort of the very edge of where we can go to in terms of being able to bring you here from the, the broadcast live point of view. So um, we're not always hearing everything in terms of our communication. But let's go see if we can find those impalas around. Alright guys, we're going to the walk to have a look at what they've got, we're going to see what they So this young bull is about 10, what he's doing is he's, well he's obviously eating his breakfast of new spring leaves, but he's also, I like to kind of... Can just catch my breath. Again, this is visceral and real, this is the way it is, that was the unborn impala lamb that you picked up there that'll be food for them as well we've got the lambing season starting now in about end of end of november around big cat week just after thanksgiving when we're going to be doing some of this again very exciting time when all the young ones are coming around all the predators obviously having good feeding time then shadow is still very much alert but relaxing a little bit as well you can see just the posture there just sort of dropping her shoulders slightly. She knows what the are up to. As well from the safari tent. We're gonna have a short break and we will see you back after that. See what happens here. What a morning. I'm reading about four out of five now. Yo. Oh, guys, sorry, we're in a short commercial break now. I'm, I'm still, my, everything's still catching up with everything. This has just been goosebump stuff, literally. I'm so glad you could all be here for the, for the experience. I would just never have hoped for something this incredible. You know, our first drive to Nat Geo Wild, almost a year ago now. We had that amazing experience with a leopard, amazing lion next day. Look at this again, it really is as, as if 
the more people get on board with this, the more energy we share, the magic just tends to happen. And I know that sounds silly, but it from experience, certainly seen that happen on so many occasions now. I was hoping to get to a place where we could see the leopard as well as the hyena, but it might be a bit difficult. Just look at how amazing that hyena looks. Scarlet red blood on the face. Incredible. Look at this one. Look at this. She's got a blind eye, the right hand side. Full belly. I wonder if she's not got youngsters on the way, perhaps. Just the way that belly sits, it doesn't just look like a full belly, it looks like a like a low down belly, if you know what I mean. Try and just oh tricky tricky tricky. Love for Shadow to get some of this food. Um, I'm gonna try. Let's just see if we stick our nose in here. Let's just try and see quickly. We can see them from. Just about from where I am. There we go. Come on. Through the twigs. Stunning, 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 stunning. See how that light is just catching her. It's still very early. Who knows? It could be lion arriving here. All this noise from the impalas and amazing <laughs> that, the shadow in the background mm. Okay, well, uh, everyone else is going to be jumping back on the biggest safari vehicle in the world, but also the most personal. Also the most private. What a pleasure and privilege to be here. Amazing. Well, for those of you that were away for a few minutes, welcome back. We've moved a little bit. Nahina seemed to be moving as well. There they're taking the rest of the carcass. The other one, it's thick bush here, tricky to see everything. They're just dragging it along. In fact, we got to a place where we could see both them and the leopard. But I think if we go a bit forward now, we're going to get an even better view of the leopard. And since they've moved the carcass, so the hyenas are off to our left-hand side. And there you can see. Busy with breakfast. Oh, here's the leopard. She's up. She's coming closer, actually. Look at that. Well, great question, Wendy. All the way from Nebraska on safari this morning. Wendy, you're asking how often do leopard lose their kill to hyena? Now, just before we talk about that further, just look how she's staying in the shadows. If she walks out of that, it's going to be absolutely stunning. But she knows that she's more camouflaged in the shadows to the point where the hyenas might not even see her. Wendy, quite often actually, as we saw this morning. I mean, we, we, we were watching the leopard. I didn't even see the hyena coming, leopard saw it just in time, flashed away, boom, the hyena there. It also happens that lions do the same. If lions hear the noise or those impalas alarm calling, that's what gave it away. Lions often respond and steal it as well. It's even been seen, I've seen it here at Juma, at the table, hyenas this side, where leopard kills something, hyenas came in, chased the leopard up a tree, leopard managed to 
keep hold of the food though. Next thing, depending on obviously who's bigger and so on. But ahinas, obviously, they are great scavengers. They're actually very good hunters as well. People don't always know that. But they are very opportunistic, smart animals. So they hear alarm calls, they respond immediately. And for them this morning, they were the guys that walked away with the spoils. But shadow is good. Oh, great question. Sorry, I was just going to say that shadow is safe. She knows that she's avoided dahinas. That's the main thing for her. She can hunt again. Joe Ellen, if I'm getting the name right there, welcome on the drive. Just asking which animals have got the most endurance. We were talking about how fast leopard are. The fastest of all the cats, well, the fastest of all mammals on land are cheetahs. But they can't run for very far at those extreme speeds. I mean, we're talking over 65 miles an hour. Endurance in this area that we're in, the ahina that we're looking at now, I mean, that's still a young ahina. Give it time, it'll be as big as the other ones. But ahinas have got great endurance. The way they built that sloping back and the strong front quarters. The strong front quarters are important for dragging the carcass like earlier. Strong jaws as well for breaking through bones. But they can run great distances, sort of loping run, and that's partly to do with the sort of the body design, if you want. The only thing that would be able to outrun a hina even in terms of distance would be wild dogs, which we also see. In fact, a couple of days ago, we were in a hunt with them as well. He's running away. I wonder why. I can't see anything here. But guys, this is interesting. Watch, watch, watch. Yeah, I thought this might happen. Look at that. She's out into the sunlight already. Yo, oh, what a stunning view of that dark shadow behind her. Of shadow with a dark shadow behind her, so I have to say that. Keep in mind, this leopard's name is Shadow. She is unbelievably beautiful. For me, it still... It still leaves me mind blown to sit with leopard like this. I've done this for many, many years now. And uh, I still stand here and I sometimes just want to just... You know how they say, laugh and cry at the same time. It's that beautiful. Mm. I'm hoping she comes even closer. Natalie, you are asking what markings do we use to, to recognize these cats by? With enough time, when you spend a lot of time with them, you start to just recognize them like you do people. Now this specific cat, as I say, I've, I've actually spent a lot of time with her as a youngster, aged about six months until she became independent. Her mother also is a leopard, I know extremely well. So shadow, in a way, you can almost just recognize because you've seen her so many times. But you look at markings on the face. For instance, if you look at her now, just as a visual reference there, above her left eye, so to our right-hand side, the way you're looking at her, you can see that nice dark marking above the eyebrow, sort of in the inside top corner of the eye. That would be a possible reference. You use the whisker spots as well. But I'll talk more about that. Natalie, just, uh, Natalie, just remind me when she's close because we will show you those whisker spots above the whisker line between the nose and the mouth you can get very specific spots there that's what's typically used but once you get to know them you can recognize them from facial features specific markings on the face almost curious to see if she doesn't maybe try and do something she's just here here's the young young you know the adult hyenas have left now might be look at that youngster i mean that's that's not even a year old probably about eight months or so, ten months maybe, dragging that carcass, okay, moving, leopard should be up any second, let's see, she's keeping it closer, because what she could do, shadow is very, very quick, as we said, lightning fast, so if she can run in there, grab the carcass, maybe get it up into a tree, she can secure that food for herself, so this is not over for her, and you must remember, all predators, anything that has to hunt to survive are opportunistic. You can be a great hunter, have the best stealth and stalking abilities in the world, be the strongest, but if you're not opportunistic, you must spot it. You must grab the moment when it's there. I'm gonna move a little bit closer to her. Just to 
because if, if this does erupt into action again, which can happen any second, um, the carcass is just there. I just want to sit in a place where we can see it all. Um, morning, John. Great to have you on the vehicle again. Sorry, I'm just having a look at some of the tracks here. It's uh, what a morning. I think this should be a good place for us. Also, then if this does change, which could happen, she's carefully watching this. Ah, there's another Hina in the background again. That's why she's not moving. John, sorry, you were just asking how much does Shadow weigh, the specific female? She's not a very big leopard. Um, and one always has to be careful when guessing weight because you can so easily get it a bit wrong. And <laughs> that can sometimes be funny, but sometimes not. But um, uh, she's not a very big female. I would estimate her around 35, 40 kilograms, which is about 75, 85 pounds, something in that region. Yeah, I think about it. Let, let's say 80 pounds, um, I think would be not a bad estimate. If she's eaten a lot, maybe a little bit more. But at the moment, she's waiting for that opportunity. But as all beautiful cats, very happy, very regal in the sunlight. Look at all those markings. Let's, let's, uh, I was going to say, let's everyone see what markings they would use to recognize this cat. What would you do if you came on safari drive with us again? This afternoon when we go out for the sunset safari or tomorrow or the next day, what would you use as a reference? Whew, amazing. We're going to stay close by here. If she moves, if anything happens, if she runs over there, as you can see her eyes are just closing. Have a look at that. She's just sort of settling down now. Keeping an eye but waiting for a moment. We've got some really interesting background and stories and a fascinating experience with this leopard and her youngster we're going to share with you enjoy the safari tent i will stay right here and see you back in a bit this is unbelievable folks i could not tell you that this was going to happen we didn't know it was going to happen this is safari live this is happening right here right now in south africa the most incredible thing that you could ever have dreamt for to see what you saw this morning with peter like my heart's still racing i got goosebumps when he got goosebumps it was absolutely incredible this place as you can see has got one of the highest density uh, of leopards in in the country now we've been really really lucky to follow many of those stories particularly shadow as peter said he knows that an animal very in intimately uh, and when we do follow them we get to know them very very well but there's one that really stands out one very very unusual story sindile sindile is about uh probably seven eight six eight one year old sorry i think one year old now we met him about six months ago most of the team met him at the same time and we met him with his mum shadow Shadow, who would have thought that this cat was going to be on, on the screen this morning? And we met him. He's a really, really interesting cat. And uh, take, come and meet him. Sindile is a young male leopard who lives with his mother, Shadow, here in Juma Game Reserve. Raising a young leopard is never easy. The journey to adulthood is not helped by all the dangers they face living in the wild. Shadow lost five litters of cubs to predators before Sindile. He is now her oldest surviving cub and on the verge of independence. But Shadow's poor track record as a mother has not given Sindile the easiest start in life. Sindili has been forced to fend for himself more often than not. His hunting and killing skills are not yet fully developed. And he is going to need them to survive. He's a real, he's a great little cat. I really like him. A little bit clumsy at times, but a real character. I'm not going to talk anymore because I want to get back to Shadow and Peter and see what's happening. <laughs> Guys, we've moved a little bit. We're closer to her now. She's just behind us here. We've got an amazing view of her. She's looking at us as well. Just look at those yellow eyes. So I've lowered down. 
Oh, just look at that. It's like they're glowing. I'm going to keep watching her for now. Also that tail tip, just watch that tail tip every now and again, just a little twitch. You can really, well, often leopards show their sort of excitement or emotion in the tail tip. She might give us a yawn just now by the look of it. I'm just wondering what's going to happen next. We've been so surprised this morning. Just a question there from Lur, um, asking whether two leopard would take on a hina. Well, keep in mind firstly that leopard are solitary animals. Even though we do sometimes see leopards together, obviously mother and cubs, which is a beautiful experience, as we've just been seeing and learning about this specific leopard, about Shadow and Sindile, her youngster. So you see them together. But typically leopards don't work as teams, they're solitary animals. Once they mature, the females will have the youngsters with them, but no other mature leopard with them, and the males also solitary. So they're not really geared for working together. The hyena's moving again. You can't see the hyena's that well from here, so we're going to stay watching her. But the hyena's moving away, and I think she's hoping, as I've said from the beginning, that there might be a window for her to, to grab some of that food for herself. There we go, there we go. Okay, see, she keeps herself a little bit low down. I'm going to crouch down as well. She's going to walk right in front of us. Sneaks in as quiet as a breeze through the grass, no sound. Soft paws, they've got these very fine hairs around the toes, so she can feel as she puts her feet down. Oh, she's gonna go for it. I'm gonna move a little bit. She's gonna grab that food and she's gonna want to put it up in a tree or something, get it away from Lahinas. Let's see what she's, she's doing. You can see her very careful. Keep in mind, she has to be wary. She has to be wary of those ahinas. And there's no big trees close by. That's maybe one of the problems. Also, Shadow is not traditionally the best hoister of her carcasses. Hoisting just refers to when they take the, the carcass and they climb up into a tree exactly to avoid ahinas and lions. But at least she's getting to eat some of her kill this morning. Oh, anything can happen at this moment. Those hyenas could be back here. But they might have also moved off. She's having a bite, but she'll be looking around a lot. We're going to be going a little bit closer to see better. If you're going to be away for a few minutes, we'll be here when you get back. Oh, well, amazing. <laughs> It just keeps getting better. I mean, to have her going back to the carcass, that adds another aspect to the story from this morning. As I said, now he knows any second, they're just here close by. It's actually quite strange that they just left it. There's still a decent amount of food left there. A little bit tricky on the right, it's quite thick. I'm just gonna, oh, there's Aina, look, 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 look. Yeah. Oh, and the monkeys are calling as well. I wonder what's going on. Monkeys are calling down towards the water hole. Too far to see this leopard, so there might be something else around as well. Maybe lions. I think this morning I wouldn't be surprised if a T-Rex jumped up behind the bush. It's that good. Yo, look, are you not carrying it? Yeah, the Aina doesn't want to lose that food again. Yes, she's coming out again. Shadow, it's like a tug of war. Well, not a tug of war because the hyena would always win in the pool, but it's certainly a battle of wills and wits here. See who can get whatever possible from this morning's food. Monkeys calling in the background. Alarm calls. Oh, so graceful. While she's going back firstly to where the food was taken, keep in mind, as I even grab that carcass, little bits of meat and maybe a little bit of the organs could have dropped off. So there might be a few morsels of food for her. That's where she's going to right now. 
see if she can get anything. Doesn't look like there's much left. She's sniffing around. This is where the hyenas were dragging it around. So maybe other bits and pieces for her to find. And I'm also guessing that she might follow behind them. Still hoping for an opportunity. Hunting wise, she's been given away around this area. All the animals are on alert. We can hear the monkeys are calling. The impalas were long calling earlier. I am so glad that you are with us for this experience. Just look at this light still. I'm just, the beauty of early morning is fantastic for me. I love it. And uh, while we're waiting for everyone else to get back on the vehicle while they're on a break, during which we experience that excitement of the hyena coming in and chasing her, it would be nice to share it with everyone again when they get back. So we must tell them. So when we uh, come back from the break, we're going to share that with them and show them again. I'm sure you don't mind seeing it a second time. I certainly won't. Let's look at the design of that cat, all the way from the ears to the tail tip. Of all the cats, leopard are just so beautifully proportioned. And apart from the actual, you know, colors if you want. The shapes of the rosette markings, the beiges and browns and golds and whites. Now if you were a... You would um, certainly be able to learn some things from watching leopard. Well, just to keep everyone on the vehicle on track, we've got about a minute before we have everyone coming back. Anything can still happen, but I think the hyenas have moved off. She's very happy, this leopard, because she's got something to feed on, or to eat on. In fact, let's use that minute wisely. Let's get another view here. It looks like she's going to be there for a bit. Still looking around. Okay, shortly when everyone else gets back, we're going to show them again what they missed. Look how she's in a little patch of sunlight. It's beautiful. Look at that light. Oh. Well, welcome back in the vehicle, everyone. Welcome back in the safari. Lots have happened while you were away. She's got a bit of food, and we're going to show you just now. She actually managed to grab a little bit, but then let's have a look. The hyenas came back and they chased her again. We're going to show you now what you missed. It's going to. Oh, this was amazing. Look, look, look. She went to grab some food. We thought she might have the food to herself. Yeah. And the hyenas came back and chased her away. Cool. Lots of excitement. But they've left in the interim. So at least she's got something to eat now. It's not the best. It's not the best pickings. She's eating some of the lower intestines there. But as I said, a lot of the high nutritional value, a lot of the important food, if you want, is often in the, in the soft bits. But a good moral to this story. You know, if she was upset about losing a carcass, she would have gotten nowhere. She stayed around, used the opportunity, like all predators, opportunistic. And she's got a decent meal. Still looking around a lot. She has to stay alert. She has to stay vigilant. It's pretty open in general around us. We're very lucky that this sort of happened in a bit of a clearing that she 
managed to drag this impala down and just in case you've maybe only joined us in the last few minutes maybe your friends let you know and said listen we're on safari come join us it's incredible uh what happened this morning had a lovely start as always with all the possibilities of the bush anything can happen elephant buffalo lion wild dog leopard hyena we were looking for this leopard shadow her tracks were in the area i was sitting down at the water hole just listening looking at some hippos and as we started you on the drive with james and with hayden in the safari tent we just heard the impalas going ch -ch 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 -ch, alarm calls everywhere we raced in here and we got here just m not even minutes seconds probably after she grabbed the impala watching her super excited i couldn't believe what had happened Lahinas came in stole the carcass from her she stuck around had some patience and at least she's got some food from that that would be a nutshell what really happened here was the experience the fact that you could sit here with us live in the moment and not only see but feel share that emotional aspect of being in the bush and seeing nature at its best. For me personally, and I'm sure for many of you, I know for many of you, it just doesn't get better than this. In the back you can still hear that call. Sorry, my mouth is dry from talking so much. All the excitement. That call in the background. They were going crazy earlier. I was going to say they were going bananas. Those are monkeys that are making that noise. I thought at first they might have seen something else down at the water hole. We're not that far from water. If we're very lucky this morning, we might still see her going for a drink. There's not that much food left, so after this she might actually want to go drink. So we're going to stick with her and maybe see that. But the monkey's probably high up in the tree. They could see her as well. Obviously all this commotion, the hyenas running around. The monkeys are just telling the other monkeys and effectively telling the other animals in this general area that there's... There's a dappled predator in the, in the bush. You can see through the way she's eating that. It's not too tasty, obviously. We're not going to go too close, but uh, she's sort of eating it gingerly, I think is the word. That's not be I mentioned earlier on, but just to mention again, for us to get you on safari where we're sitting at this moment, we had to go to the very edge of where we can go in terms of the technology. So I can't always hear everything exactly. Yes, that's it. She's lapping up the last little bit of blood there. I don't think there's much for her to eat now. I'm hoping she goes for a drink. We will stay with her and see. But for now, HT back in the tent. Hayden, a good friend of mine, has got something to tell you about this leopard. Absolutely incredible stuff, folks. I'm just so overwhelmed by what we've just seen live here in Africa. But I just want to tell you a little bit more quickly whilst, while Shadow is eating about Sindili, her cub. As you can see, her cub, nowhere to be seen. Sindili is only one year old. They don't reach independence until they're about two years old. And that's because Sindili hasn't had a great track record. She's had about five litters and Sindili, I'm sorry, Shadow has had about five litters. And Sindili is her most successful or oldest surviving cub. She's lost the rest. It's a pretty incredible thing to know that a mother has just left her baby and we're not really sure what's going on in this story, but he has to fend for himself. He's had to really uh, get out there and try and hunt for himself. He's not fantastic. He lacks experience, that's for sure. So one day we saw something, uh, a completely unexpected event happen. I don't think myself or any of the team had seen it ever before. Um, it's pretty hard to watch, uh, I have to admit, and I have to warn you now, um, but I want you to take a look at this. Young Sindili is now alone on Juma. Unexpectedly in September, we find Sindili with his biggest catch yet. This is no ordinary prey. He has caught a domestic dog. Still inexperienced, Sindili is unsure what to do. His instincts are there, but he doesn't know how to finish the kill. The dog is still alive. The dog escapes and the park rangers give chase. 
it could have rabies and must be caught and tested. If the dog is rabid, it may spell the end of Sindili's short life. Absolutely incredible stuff to watch. And we, uh, we have some information that the dog, dog did test positive for rabies. So Sindili was darted and inoculated. And the good news is that uh, Sindili is showing no symptoms of the rabies virus. So that's a pretty incredible story. But um, we don't really know, but maybe because it was his lack of experience and not actually successful killing and eating that, uh, that dog that uh, actually saved his life. Now you can follow the story from here on in, live on wildsafarilive.com. And when we return in Big Cat Week at the end of November, just after Thanksgiving, I'm gonna bring you right up to speed with the latest news. It's been an incredible thing to be with you folks. I wanna cross back to Peter, but we'll see you. I'll see you in Big Cat Week. We'll all see you in Big Cat Week at the end of November, just after Thanksgiving. You never know what's around the next corner. Back to Pete. We're just repositioning her. She's found another little bit of food. Something that he knows had dropped in the process of taking that carcass away. Incredible that we could find Shadow this morning. Never mind all the amazing activity around it. But what a story. Sindile, the young leopard. What the future holds for him and the story that we will we'll see and follow. This female, potentially next litter somewhere along the line, on the way again. And this is what is incredible if you spend a lot of time out here. If you come on safari often, like many of you have, many of you have been on safari with us 10, 20, 100, thousands of hours even. You get so into the stories, the bush stories, the newspaper every morning, the news every evening. Who's been doing what? Who's got new cubs? Who's hunting where? Which elephant herds are moving? Big herd, I heard earlier on the radio, further to the east, massive herd of buffalo, over 400 buffalo moving in. Herd of buffalo like that normally have a pride of lion behind them. So you get into all these stories of the bush. And that's what safari is about. Being in nature, enjoying the beauty of it, and then you come across moments of brilliance and magic like this where you don't even have the words to explain it. That's what we're doing. That's what Safari Live is all about. And if this is your first time on Safari with us, I'm so glad you could join us today because today was one of those drives that we'll be talking about a couple of times down the line around the campfire. She's looking towards where the hyenas disappeared. Lots of things out here in the bush. She's still looking towards where the hyenas have disappeared. Big things, small things, this is one of the most interesting and uh, potentially uh, scary things in the bush. Enjoy it with Brent on the walk, we're going to find a new view. Puff at it. Come, come. Guys, we've just heard something incredible. By the way, my name's Brent Leo Smith, and while we've been here, we've got Steph who's behind us with a firearm, and we just spotted a, a puff adder, which is one of the most deadly snakes in Africa just between that two. Um, if you have a look really carefully with you follow my stick, you can see him there. You can just see his tail disappearing. And that is a snake that poses the biggest threat to us while we're walking in the bush. He's disappeared down that hole. Um, so what they do is they are very, very sluggish and slow moving snakes. And they all lie on a game path and bask in the sun, specifically in the early morning like this. and Sometimes you stand on them, but generally they give a really loud hiss beforehand. But this snake probably bites more people in rural Africa than any other. Uh, he's got a nice safe den here. I'd probably find he's been out hunting all night, looking for rodents. I'm just gonna see if we can see into the hole from the other side. So, 
he's gone under this fallen log here. And obviously we don't want to disturb too much. I'm just going to move some of these leaves. See if we can hear him hiss. So unfortunately he has gone into a den here. So we're not going to be able to get another view of him. But isn't that incredible? That's a, the wonderful thing about being on foot. You never know what you're going to encounter. And you hear and see things that you would never see from a vehicle. So that's why I love walking and it's so exciting. And we're going to cross back to Peter and that amazing leopard shadow. While she's on the move, what an amazing thing to see as well. Puff adder is something that always, always gets your attention when you're in the bush, especially on foot like Brent. She's moving, we're going to try and stay with her. It's getting very thick here. I think she's heading down towards the water. Still that early morning light. Look at her shadow. Shadow, shadow. She's very careful, keep in mind. Also, Ahina's in the area. Those monkeys were alarm calling. My first thought at the time was that it wasn't because of the leopard or the Ahina. So not impossible that there's something else. We're close to a water hole. Water hole attracts many things. Maybe lion. They were lying here last night around 2 o'clock. They had two male lion in the area. And we've only got, well not we, you've only got about two minutes left, many of you, to stay with us. And at the end, as always, it's a bit tricky to say, or hard to say goodbye. You can stay with us as well on wildsafarilive.com afterwards. I'm just saying that because it's getting very thick here now. I am probably the best vehicle for this in the world in terms of off-road ability to follow her. But we are going to try and stay with her. This is perfect leopard country, by the way. The stuff's just moving through now. Thick, lots of little drainage lines. Ooh, tricky, tricky. Where is she going? I think she's going to walk through this. We should see her in front there again. As I said, this is perfect, perfect leopard country. Just find my seat. I can see she's just behind you. As soon as she moves it, we can see her. We'll show you. But she is on the way to the water. Oh, beautiful. She's coming back towards us. Thank you, Shadow. That's amazing. Right next to us here, when I mean, she's feet away. Oh, amazing. I do think she's going to the water. We're going to stay with her. She's right behind us there. She's going to come around this side again. She's right here. She's right here. Can't see her right now. She's too close behind us. But what an amazing morning. Thank you for joining us. Safari Live, it's been incredible. Stay with us again and follow these stories of Sindile and we will see you just after Easter. <laughs> oh, you gonna do a... <sighs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. What a morning. Guys, we're gonna have to go around. She's going through for a drink. And there's no ways we can get through this, even with the best vehicle in the world. Only Leopard can get through this area. Even Ahina, I think, might struggle. <laughs> Just firstly, thank you so much, everyone. That was an incredible experience. It's not stopped. Trust me, we're going to stay with this Leopard for as long as we can. But, wow! That's what we want. We want more people to get into the safari experience. We want ideally billions of people to just fall in love with leopard and nature and the experiences you can have out here. And no better way, I think, to do that than to do it live. Let's just see. She's stopping there on a the log. Maybe we can get another view before she crosses. So, yeah, I just want to say wow. And I want to say thank you so much for, for being part of it this morning. Thank you so much for still being part of it right now. There she goes. But yo, unbelievable. And shadow of all cats. She's often so shy. Oh, 
Guys, I really want to let the other game drives know as well in a bit. They'd love to see this. I'm sure Scott's been talking to them. I'll just quickly make sure they know about this. Uh, in the Aratusa station, that copy come in. We are on Aratusa Game Reserve at the moment, next to Juma. Any Aratusa station that can copy come in. Guys, if anyone can copy, we've got Shadow and the Skovanin. Uh, looks like she wants to head for a drink towards the water. Oh, you see, just weaving and making a way through through this drainage ditch. I think maybe because of activity down by the water. Maybe the Ahinas, I don't know, maybe that whatever was bothering the monkeys. And this is more typically shadow. She often likes these little, what we call drainage lines or small river beds, sort of veins of, of water when it, ran, when it rains here. And she can just disappear into it. And that's where she often goes, which is why she's so difficult to find. Well, I'm glad we stayed with her. I thought she was going to go straight through, but turned around. I'm again wondering why. Wonder what's up ahead. What is she in tune with? What is she aware of? Make, her, make that decision. Oh. Woo. I am a very happy man. Incredible morning. Let's see if she gets up onto this termite mount perhaps. Sometimes I like to do that for a viewpoint. Get a bit of elevation. Hello Brian, great question. Great, great question. How much weight? Can a leopard carry up a tree? Brian, so I'm going to speak to you just now. We just have to, she's moving again. Oh, I don't want to lose her. And it's all blocked up in front there with logs and trees. Um, Brian, they can carry more than their own body weight. So for her, I mean, as we said, we're estimating her around, let's say, 80 pounds. Um, so she'd be able to carry a 100 pound. That impala that she caught would have been probably a little bit heavier than her or very close to the same weight, maybe a little bit lighter. But in that same range, she would carry that up a tree. Big male leopard, big male leopard can weigh, same as what I weigh, even a bit more, 85, 90 kilograms. Uh, that's about 170, 180 pounds. So they'd be able to take the 180 pound, 200 pound antelope, or one of me for comparison, up a tree if they wanted to. So very, very powerful. I think power to weight ratio. Leopard are probably the most powerful. Ah, I don't know, I mean, that's very rich to say. Lion, lion also. You know, not to be trifled with. So, um, all these animals are very, very strong. But when it comes to climbing, nothing beats a leopard uh, with a big cat. You know, incredibly agile, sharp nails, you know, great balance, which is also important. She's coming back again towards where the kill was. Let's see where she goes. If we lose her or if it gets a bit thick, might go and look at some of the other things as well happening in the morning. Let's just give it a quick second to see where she's going, but I've got a feeling, yes, we're going to find another place that we can see better from. For now, you're going to have an incredible view of one of my other favorite animals. Enjoy it. Hello everyone, what a spectacular morning you have had. We have had, the wilderness has had. And from the savagery and kind of fierceness of what you've witnessed, we come to a herd of elephants, which just restores the balance and peace that nature offers. Well, as long as you don't run over the elephants, of course. Um, you've had an unbelievable morning, and I'm really jealous of Peter and you that you've seen that beautiful cat and the hyenas but it is a real reminder of the rawness of the wilderness and there's a wonderful poem uh, the words of which I've forgotten but the sentiments of which go along the lines of the wilderness will give you peace but it will just as soon kill you um, and it's a really interesting kind of concept to me because I come out here and I live out here because of the peace it gives me 
but you are reminded every so often by spectacular mornings like you've had today that things here are raw and wild and very wonderful at the same time and this is a beautiful peaceful herd of elephants that's just helping to restore the freneticism or frenetic atmosphere that must have surrounded what has to be the year's highlight so far and wonderful for Peter to come back from Namibia where they're not leopards are not really thick on the ground and um, and to see something like that great for him he'll take away some wonderful pictures no doubt and some even better memories to share with his kids and his wife now these elephants have been feeding through the woodland since the start of the broadcast at six o'clock and they're now kind of starting to move a little bit faster towards a very large water hole just to the north of us it's called the Sydney's Dam and that's in Biffleshoek if you do lose picture here it is not because the broadcast has ended it is because we are in a fairly dodgy signal area so while Peter repositions we'll stay with these elephants and see what happens with them and then we'll send you back to him and shadow and you can see now from above that is just wonderful I'm so pleased with this you're watching them clearly walking along the road from the drone drone commander Andrew Francis who uh, lost his drone briefly today but we won't mention too much about that is now flying above the elephants and you can see how many there are they're quite a few you will give them a wave everyone Brian. we're waving at you now at the drone and isn't that a wonderful angle to get I think we're going to learn a huge amount about animals from looking at them in the air I think we'll see the interactions between them and the different relationships that they have with each other more probably much more more closely and more obviously from above especially when we get a little bit more sophisticated about it that slight wobbling that you can feel is uh, the Wendy running over a very large pile of very fresh elephant dung uh, so sorry about that back to the air now and you can see how I think the one thing that strikes me when I look at these shots from the air is that the, the bush looks a lot more open than it feels like when you're driving through it. It always feels like uh, you are driving through the windy impenetrable forest when you're chasing after elephants and other such animals. And it's so great that you can see that it's not actually that thick. And I mean, obviously, there's a huge noise when we drive along through the thick bush. The drone just beautiful silence. We're going to keep going a little bit round. I don't think I want to bash through here if you've got an aerial view of them, but we'll keep watching them as they go towards the water. What I'm going to do, I'm going to just stop here, and what I want you to do, you've had a very frenetic morning, and I'm going to stop here and try and give you a sense of the peacefulness that these elephants are transferring certainly to me and Brian do they make me feel peaceful? Mm, very much so. So you can get an impression there of the peace of it. You can hear the birds perhaps and the cicadas calling and the elephants are going to head off to drink now. Right, we're going to send you back to that beautiful, raw, savage animal that is the leopard. And we're so grateful for the time we've spent with her. And I'm sure Peter is too, and he'll tell you more about it right now. See you just now. Oh, what a tale we have to tell from this morning. Unbelievable views, I believe, you had of those elephants. We are, as you can see, very close to shadow still. That uh, stuff in the foreground there was the vehicle's edge. The safari vehicle we're in, the Land Rover we're in, the best vehicle in the world for me. It's been amazing. And uh, oh. speaking of amazing, 
that view that you just had of the elephant, apart from the view itself being amazing, but how ultimately cool is it that we can experience wildlife in this way? Like an eagle from up there, like wildlife from down on the ground ourselves. You cannot ask for more on a safari experience. Looks like you might have seen something there, perhaps. Perhaps hyena again. Keep looking. It's a lot of thick sort of low brush around us, so things can sort of disappear into it. She's finished the last little smidgens of food that was left there. We're just watching her. So a little bit of grooming. You could see her licking the paws. There she's looking again towards the hyena direction, or what I think might have been hyena. All cats always keep themselves clean. Well, all animals. You can't stay sort of dirty out here except maybe for warthogs but for warthogs and buffalo being muddy is not dirty that is being clean so that's the way that they cope with all the sort of physical needs of remaining healthy out here but leopard and lion but leopard above all of them sorry I'm waffling now what I'm trying to get to is nothing keeps themselves as immaculately clean and pristine and beautiful the way leopards do And that's why they look like this. Well, again, Ryan, nice question. Ryan's just wondering, would a leopard take a chance catching a young hyena and eat it? Ryan, interestingly enough, it has happened. It's been documented and photographed and seen where they do kill young hyena. Lion, the same. They do kill hyena, but they don't eat them. Typically, they don't. I mean, I'm not saying it's impossible. You know, if you're hungry enough, any food is food. Just going to turn around, try and get another view of her that side. She's moving away now down towards the drainage line here. Let's just turn here. So Ryan, um, no, not likely, but you know, if you're really hungry and there's nothing else and it happens, I'm sure it can happen, so I'm sure it has happened, but it's not something that is typical um, behavior for them. She's going into the thick drainage line system now. We will try and stay with her, but it might be that she goes we can't follow there she's weaving in let's try and get next to her hold on there you can see under the log there oh there's a little road here I might stay on the road for a bit let me just get you into the open Bit of scent marking perhaps. There we go. Exactly perfect place for scent marking, spraying urine. Telling other leopard in the area that she's around. This is Shadow's Kingdom. Even if the hyena steal her food. Look, hold on, it's bumpy. Well, as I said, we're going to try and stay with her. We've got about another 15 minutes or so left of this safari. So far, so good. We are going into a deep dip here, so let's hope that you can stay with us. There she is. This is perfect. Hello Jennifer, just asking if we're close to the hyena den. Not close to the hyena den, the hyenas we saw yesterday on safari. That's much further from here, but there's other hyenas in the area. I'm not sure if they've got a den close by. Hold on a second. This is a bit of a tricky place, but we should be able to get in there is a better place. We'd be able to get in there. I just wasn't sure if we'd be able to get out. But if you're sitting with a leopard, you don't need to get out. Well, unless they leave, obviously. Okay, guys. Let me just, whoa, that's quite a steep angle. <laughs> yeah, about almost 40 degrees here. Yeah? But we can park it straight. Whoa, this would be an incredible thing to see. We're standing almost in the air with the, with the vehicle. There she is, in the soft river sand. Well, not soft, but cool river sand. She's got food in her belly. 
good morning for her, no injuries, nothing dramatic. I mean, it's exciting and it's amazing for us to see for her as well. You know, they go into full alert mode. But this is the life of a leopard in the bush. This is the life of hyenas in the bush. And buffalo and elephant and us. We are part of this as well. And if we can be such a beautiful part of this as we have been this morning, and we can get other people to be part of it as well, the more and more the better, that'll be a brilliant thing. And you and I can be part of that. We can make a difference with it. And as a bonus, get amazing emotional, personal experiences out of it. How awesome. I don't even feel like there's that much left to say. <laughs> and trust me, that's not something that happens to me very often. <laughs> I'm just loving the doves calling, the cicadas. She's grooming herself in the shadows. Life is good. And I dare say live is amazing. <laughs> I'm just having a little almost personal flashbacks here to moments shared with this specific leopard. I remember as a little a little cub, she was always a little bit smaller and a little bit almost scrawnier and always shyer than her sister Tandi. And I had some beautiful memories of her as a youngster. And to have seen her today under these conditions has just been magic. I don't think she's going to go too far. She's in a happy place here. It's a good place to groom. She's safe. She can get away easily. And uh, we're going to take a short break from here and join Brent in the bushwalk. He's got some very exciting stuff there as well. One of my favorites. Welcome back to the bushwalk. As you can see, uh, we found some elephants. We've moved areas uh, from where we were. And for those of you who watched the Juma Dam Cam will know that they were mating leopards here last night. And we think they've gone north. And while we've been, we've moved to this area to try to see if we can find them. Uh, we're checking these big game paths that run along here. And we've now found an elephant. I can't see, it looks like a big female, but we've got this nice big termite mound behind us, which should give us a bit of Aerial, so we can have a look down on them. Oh, look, come, she's coming out to the open shot. Right? Oh, quite a few around. You can hear some more on the other side of the drainage line. You can see she's got no idea we're here at the moment. The wind is coming straight across the face of us. We're not going to move right now. There's no need. She's out in the open. We can see her. We're a safe distance away. Wind is coming from her to us. It looks like she is going to start moving towards our area. So obviously we don't want to disturb them and I'd much rather move out of here without her knowing we're here. So we're going to move off back the way we've come from. So they're busy moving down this 
moving down this drainage line. And I didn't have a good look. I'll have another look once we get into a bit of safe position. Um, but I think it looked like she might have had a short trunk. So this is an elephant that I know Jamie really likes. And she can be a little bit grumpy. So obviously we'll be extra cautious around her. And each individual elephant herd has its own character. So you can't treat every time you walk up to the elephant as exactly the same. You need to read the situation. And every single time is different. So they're moving down the drainage line. So we're going to move up around here. I'm going to look for a nice high termite mound or nice big tree that we can st safely stay behind and watch them. So it might take us quite a while to get into a good position to have a look at her again. As I said, we don't want to disturb them. We don't want them to know we're here. Much, much nicer for us and the animals to be able to view them without them being interfered with. So from a vehicle, they don't have that instinctive reaction that they do to humans on foot. Human is the dominant diurnal predator. So they will either run away or become aggressive if they know we're here, especially with a breeding herd with, with babies. That's why we can get so much closer to them in a vehicle. Uh, they don't have an instinctive response to a vehicle. Vehicles only been around just over 100 years. So obviously viewing elephants on foot, we are far, far more cautious. It is just that much more exciting though. So we're going to cross you back to Peter. We're going to try reposition to get in a safe place to view her. And uh, hopefully we'll be back with that short trunked elephant. Well, always great to see elephant and certainly on foot. Always get your heart picking up a rate or two or the heart rate picking up as well. Speaking of fast heart rates, we certainly had many moments of that this morning, but now it's pretty much just fast breathing. She's got a relatively full belly, which we're happy about. Obviously, I didn't want hyenas to get everything, so I think we can all agree that good outcome for everyone. She's still got a decent meal out of it. And now she's just taking it easy in the cool riverbed here. We'll probably go for a drink a little bit later. As I mentioned a few times along the morning's amazing experience uh, the monkeys were calling early on so maybe there's something else around maybe there's lion around lion lion around somewhere maybe that's why she's still keeping back from the water and just giving it some time as the day goes on activity goes down and then it's a good time for her to go and drink speaking of which she will be around this area in the afternoon hopefully she can be found she is shadow after all. She can disappear sometimes like mist before the sun. Might be lions around this afternoon as well. So don't miss the afternoon drive. That is perfect leopard country. Sandy riverbed, big trees, lush bush. And you can see how she just blends into it. What shall we compare it to? Here's an idea. We've got a few minutes left. Let's see if we can get a couple of comparisons. She blends into it like, I was going to stay like stars into the night sky. While she's still having a nap, I think have a look at those elephants again with Brent and we'll see you just before we say goodbye. Welcome back guys. Unfortunately it doesn't look like we're going to be able to get into a position to view these elephants safely. And obviously being safe for the elephants and us is paramount. So we're not going to push this any further. You can just see, oh she just disappeared down away from us but it's very thick bush so we're not going to push the situation it's been great having you on the bush walk with us uh, so from all of us here we're going to send you across to a sleepy shadow for the last few moments of the show have a wonderful time
a last glimpse of those ellies. It's been great as well the last week or two. Lots of elephant around and this will keep just almost getting more and more up until the big rains arrive. Hopefully the big rains arrive. It is a bit of a drought season here in the Greater Kruger Park, Sabi Sands. But droughts are often good for some species. It might not be great for your grazers especially, the guys that are eating grass. The guys eating leaves do better. But the ones eating those eating the grass or the leaves, like Shadow, the leopard we're looking at, they can do pretty well through droughts because the, the prey species sometimes weaken a bit. So this is the nature. <laughs> I wish Hayden could have heard that. He would have cracked up laughing. This is the nature. It's a joke we make. But this is nature and things happen. You get droughts, you get floods, you get hot days, you get cold days, you get days where you can't find anything and then you get days where you find the leopard as it's all happening. Truly what makes this such an amazing adventure, such an incredible experience is that ability to just be part of it. To go out, see what the day brings, be opportunistic like the hunters are. Be patient, like the herbivores are perhaps, and to just be swept away and swept along in the current of what is this incredible experience over the years being known as a safari. And today I think was just an exceptional experience in it. Having said that, the bush is alive with many things, with the sound of music and happiness, and uh, there's something else for you to look at, and we'll say goodbye to Shadow just before we go. Body, just a quick one from us, some kudu, which have now, of course, put their heads into the thickest bush that they could possibly find. We've had a wonderful morning. I'm just going to sneak forward, maybe get a quick view of that beautiful kudu bull, our most magnificent antelope out here, and then we'll send you back to Shadow to say goodbye to her and a profound thanks of course for all that she has given us today. Thank you to all of you for your questions and comments and I mean yeah, I've hardly seen you at all. Uh, we will see you again this afternoon and I think I'll hand you straight back to Peter uh, so that you can say goodbye to him properly and thanks to Shadow. Thank you for watching and we'll see you this afternoon. Well, I really feel like there's not that much to say anymore. It's just been an incredible morning, as always, since the first, first, first live drive. An incredible experience to have you along with us on safari at this very special place to all of us. And for me personally, Juma Game Reserve, Eretuza, Sabi Sands, but Juma especially, thank you so much for this amazing time here. And it doesn't stop. This is always going on. There's always things happening. There's always elephant and ahina and trees and rain and lion and many things around. So every drive offers something again. You never know what's going to be next. But for now, I know that we're going to say thank you very much for an amazing experience and have a lovely day. We uh, can't quite hear everything going on. We will see you next time. Bye-bye.